Thanks for stumbling onto the channel. My name is Rebecca. Uh, I have a new pre-loved handbag in my collection that I have won on eBay from a Japanese seller. How am I going to start this video? <laughs> this was not the one that I was actually going to buy. What had happened is I had, there was a yellow one from a different seller and she's in the United States. Uh, she's a very large consignment store. Uh, I've seen her on uh, eBay for many years and on hers uh, store, it is eBay or auth authenticity guaranteed. Um, and I've learned a lot in the last few weeks about this process. So I, I had it in my watch section where you can just click and you're just watching it. You're not bidding. After a week, I think it was this, yellow one was sitting in that and it was from 2003 or 2004 so it was like 17 years old it wasn't in really good shape um i love the color and it was a 35 just like this chocolate brown so sitting on there and about a week later i my email popped up and it said from that email or that uh, ebay seller it must they must pay for this service. I, I'm not on eBay as a seller, so I'm not sure if that, their end of it, but it popped up and said, instead of the price that they had, they were offering, a little teaser, uh, a certain dollar amount. Um, do you accept? And then underneath it, it had a box where you could make your own offer. I thought, well, that's interesting. They had this big price on it, and I just had it sitting in my watch pile and our watch section, and now they're offering $1,200 less than what they had listed. And I thought, no, I still probably wouldn't buy it. But since there's a box underneath there that says, what would you offer? I put a, even another $1,200 off of it. And they reached out and said they would accept that. Great. I'm getting this for like $2,200 less than the big price that they had sitting on this uh, yellow handbag. And I'm not sure of what the color was. So when you do that and you pay through PayPal, then they send you an email saying, okay, now this bag is being sent to a third party authenticator to examine the bag and make sure that it's real before it gets shipped to me. Uh, here in Oregon and I believe she's in Maryland or New Jersey or something she's on the East Coast and I'm out here on the West Coast so I knew I was gonna have to wait a few days well three days went by or two days and that authenticator company emails me through my email on uh, eBay and says this bag has not been listed properly it was listed for X, Y, Z and had these things wrong with it. We have now noticed that it had a repair, a patch. It has been repainted. Uh, the leather that was listed on the listing is not the leather that the bag was in. So there was four or five things on there and they said, what would you like to do? Um, continue with the pro uh, process of purchasing this or go ahead and decline. And I wrote back, thank you for your time. Thank you for telling me all this stuff about what you're seeing. Because they have the bag in their hands. And I said, I would like to cancel the transaction. And they then do whatever they do on their end. Uh, within 24 hours, my money was back into my PayPal. Just that fast. Great. Didn't have to wait very long. So there's, there's my money back. I got a phone call from the ladies consignment store since I have declined this, this process. And I actually was at work, so I didn't answer the phone. I didn't know what number it was. And she left a message and she said, uh, thank you for going through this process. Uh, can we talk because I really want to find out what 
the authenticator actually came back to say to you because this bag was from somebody that went to her store and told her it was XYZ and this leather and so forth. And that's why they listed it the way that they did. So she was reaching out to find out more information. And her name was Linda. She was the owner of this consignment store that's on eBay. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll give her a call when I get home. So we talked on the phone and she asked if, uh, if I felt comfortable forwarding the email of this authenticator place of the, not this one, but of this um, yellow one so that she could see what they were saying was not listed on her listing. And so she could reach out to the person that was using her services to sell this bag. Uh, it's like a consignment. And uh, I said, yes, I didn't have a problem with that. Um, and she was very apologetic. She, she just wanted more information. And I really loved her consideration. I mean, she wasn't um, happy about losing out on a commission on this for sure but she did take all the steps and said that she was going to reach out to the person that had given them the bag and work things out on her end so I'm done with that one right okay fine it, it, it had too many things going on that wasn't listed properly and wasn't even the right kind of leather that was listed so I'm on there and I'm looking I'm looking I'm looking and so I came across this this is a chocolate brown 35. Again, I'm always in looking for the 35 centimeters. That's what I like, the bigger bags. And this one was from a Japanese seller. There's four different stores in Japan that I keep as my favorites and, and look through uh, their goodies. And I guess it's illegal. Well, it's illegal here too in America to sell a fake bag and say that it's actually a real one. But I guess they have higher penalties and whatnot. So anyway, I'm I'm rambling. I purchased this chocolate brown one. It is not in good condition. the The handles are in really bad shape. There is a long scratch on the bottom. There's marks, there's scratches, uh, it's got gold hardware. Man, my ring light's a little bit too bright. It's a 35, but the price was right. Now, I have purchased small leather goods from these resellers or eBay people from Japan. Never had to pay customs, didn't, even though they say that on the bottom when you're reading all their disclosures and stuff that the the buyer of their products is responsible for doing their customs. Because I've bought three or four different small leather goods, Louis Vuitton things, and they were smaller, there was no commission or customs. And so therefore I thought America didn't have any fees until they shipped this by DHL shipping. And DHL sent me a email saying the bag had made it to America but there was a $430 customs fee that I had to pay and I had so many days to get that paid to them or they would ship this back. Well I'm thinking well I've already paid $5,000 for the the bag that money's already gone because the Japanese store has that money so if I don't pay the customs and they do send the bag back, how long would it be before I got a refund? So I was a little a little scared about uh, what was the process if you don't pay your custom fees. Uh, if you've had this happen to you, please tell me your story down below and reach out because I would love to know a little bit more. I am learning so much. <laughs> so here comes the bag. I paid the fee, DHL, um, delivered it to my address which I had went on PayPal and changed from my home address to my work address because they will only ship it to whatever address is on your PayPal listed address so I had already changed that to be delivered to work I did not want this to be sitting on my porch or happen to sign and nobody be home and then my bag sitting on some shelf somewhere um, 
So please read your descriptions and I'm just letting you know that make sure your address on your PayPal is where you really want your luxury item to show up. So here it comes to my work and I open it up and it's in worse condition in my opinion than what they listed it as. Now knowing that it came from overseas, Japan, I've already paid $430 for custom fees to get it to my work. I'm thinking, okay, maybe some of these things that are wrong with this bag and scratches and so forth, maybe leather surgeons here in America can fix this bag. So I am going to, next week, send an email out to leather surgeons and show them the pictures of this bag and see what they can do to make it a little bit better. There is a lot of scratches on the flap. Now the handles, I do have some silk twillies and I could just wrap these handles and I would never see them again anyway. I'm probably good with that. I probably shouldn't have bought this bag, but because I was in the spending mode of buying that yellow one and the rigmarole of all this stuff that happened, and then the money's back in my bank account, and so I was thinking, well, you were already going to spend money. Why not buy the chocolate brown one? And I don't have a brown bag in my collection at all, besides my Louis Vuitton Speedy, you know, the monogram, that's brown. So it's got gold hardware and that night that this was opened at, at my work, checked it all out. It's got a stain on the inside. It's, it's really not in that good of a condition for being, this is 1994. So it, I mean, it's vintage, it's old. 1994 is not a new bag, but whoever has used this, and again, if this came from Japan, I don't know if they have a lot of humidity, perhaps where they are, and maybe that's why this is so cracked. You know, I don't even care that there's that big line on the bottom. That doesn't, that doesn't bother me. It just, it needs some touch-ups. And the corners were okay, except for one. They're a little worn. But that's going to happen with a bag that's from... 1994. It's a circle X on the code. And I had this place authenticity or um off authenticate. I'm trying to cover up a couple of things that are on here. There you go. B A B A B E B I and she will authenticate um, Hermes bags and I believe she only does Hermes bags only and then you get your certificate and then inside here I have all my paperwork from eBay the seller that I bought it from uh, my documentation from the DHL place that um, shipped me the bag and that's who I had to pay the customs fees to so there's my receipts so I'm just keeping all my paperwork in a manila envelope for that particular bag all of my pre-love items that I have purchased from fashion file or an individual person I always make a folder and put all my documents in there and have them ready in case I ever decide to resell a bag everything's ready to go so this is new to me, a 1994 35 chocolate brown Hermes. And I already have a couple of uh, inserts for uh, Hermes because I have a blue jean one that I purchased from Fashion File here in America. And I have a thick one, 
like a two millimeter, real thick, that keeps the, the structure. And a 1.2 millimeter, really flimsy uh, insert that fits the 35s. So I won't have to spend any more money, but I am going to reach out to leather surgeons. I'm going to show them the pictures and see what they can do to help this bag because I am not going to send this all the way back to Japan uh, because it's, it's not in excellent condition, obviously. It's a used bag. I knew that. And they did show the pictures of the handles, but there's just some other things in here that I thought they could have done a better job on their description. Uh, would I repurchase from a Japan seller? Probably not a large purchase like this because of the customs and this being difficult for me to my, wrap my brain around if I wanted to send it back. So I probably won't be using eBay again on a large purchase like this. I'll just go ahead and continue using uh, eBay for United States sellers or... Um, Stay away from eBay and just buy from individuals. Fashion File, which is my, my personal preference, better than a Rebag or a Real Real. I prefer Fashion File. And this is, this is what it looks like. There's no key, there's no lock. It's just the bag. Know what else I can say at this point but just letting you know that I have this bag and I really wanted that that yellow one <laughs> if it did not have so many things that weren't listed and especially the leather then I would have probably not have purchased this one because I was in the mindset I was buying something oh well hmm. what you gonna do hmm. What you gonna do? All right, so we'll talk more about this bag in the future because I will definitely do a video of uh, after reaching out to leather surgeons and finding out what they can do uh, to help a little bit uh, with this bag. Now I'm guessing that this, these handles are not repairable, but perhaps they can seal them so that they don't have any more damage that can happen to them. But I do plan on putting wraps around them but I would like them to not start uh, chipping or peeling whatever you call this on leather okay that is it thanks for watching hit that like button for me I have less than a thousand subscribers so if you don't hit the like button the videos tend to get lost and they don't roll back up on the side for other people to see your videos and watch them. So hit the like button, subscribe, that would be fantastic so I can hit a thousand subscribers, but um, asking you for sure to hit the like button if you like lecturing handbags and definitely the story of how I got this one compared to the yellow one. Thanks for watching and you guys have a fabulous week. Bye-bye. <laughs>